It's fair to say that FreeBSD powers some of the most advanced IT networks and infrastructure that can be found in the world today. From large servers to the smallest appliances, and I think for many people, this is part of the problem why it's seen to be so complicated and hard to use. And certainly not something that maybe your granny could use. But if I told you that there was a FreeBSD or a FreeBSD version that was as easy as pi and that your granny could use, I wonder what you'd say. Well, in this video, we're going to show you. Right then, so the FreeBSD or the FreeBSD uh, variant, I suppose, or derivative that we're going to show you is GhostBSD. It's essentially FreeBSD with a, an easy to use GUI on top. You don't have to be technically minded as well because GhostBSD is as easy to download and to get going as it is to use. FreeBSD itself, the vanilla FreeBSD, if you wish, can be a bit, a little bit perhaps uh, suited for more technically minded people, but GhostBSD can be downloaded by someone with a very faint understanding of computers. And like I said, the, the ease of use for GhostBSD starts on the actual homepage and downloading. You just go to the direct download area. You download the top bit and you can choose the mirror. And uh, because I'm in the UK, I'm gonna choose France. And there we are, it's as simple as that. There's no multiple versions to choose. There are a couple of versions that you can choose, but the main one is at the top. You click it, it downloads. So once it's downloaded, it does take a little while. It's not overly uh, slow. Well, it's on my internet, but you know, it doesn't take ages. When that's finished, you can either use, say for instance, if you're on Linux or Windows, you could use Belena Etcher, or if you're on FreeBSD, you could use DD. Well, you know, we find a way that's more comfortable with yourself and write it onto a USB stick, put it in the target machine and boot it up and then we'll get installing. Right, so I'm on my usual test machine. Uh, this could be anything really. Um, I would say though, if you're using a laptop, I would perhaps uh, plug it into ethernet. Can be a little bit tricky, depending on what, uh, what uh, Wi-Fi card or chipset is in your laptop, not guaranteed to work. That's just one of the vagaries of uh, FreeBSD based OSs, I'm afraid, at the moment. But things will change. So things are going to get better. Right. So here we are on the GhostBSD desktop. Find the install GhostBSD icon. You click on it. And that brings up a welcome to GhostBSD window. And this is really basically your install uh, application. Choose your keyboard layout. Uh, I eventually found mine. Click next. Europe and London. You can choose the capital, uh, so obviously near to yourselves. Uh, you can just uh, click defaults on these, and top one is your hard drive you want to install to. Just leave everything else alone. Click next. Click next again. Enter your real name because th this part is not for your grandma. This part is for uh, you as the the candlelight administrator. So you put a name in that you want to display. You put your password, which is, uh, you want to remember that. And then we'll start installing. The installation for GhostBSD doesn't take that long. I do know I speeded it up. And there we go. So just click on restart. Take a USB stick out of the machine and it'll boot into the newly installed GhostBSD. Which we're doing now. And there we go. So ready to log in. So put in the password that you did earlier. The uh, super secure one. And press enter. And it should hopefully boot in. There we go. So now you notice it's the same desktop but minus the install because we've already installed. Right, the next first thing we want to do is if you go to the uh, control center, you could do it individually from the pull down menu, but I prefer the control center. We want to see if there are any updates for GhostBSD. And there are some available, uh, quite a few, which is a good thing. So if we click install, thing is it autom automatically makes a uh, snapshot of the system before you install. So if anything goes wrong, you can always roll it back to that. That's one of the great things about uh, GhostBSD. The computer needs to restart, so we need to restart in order for things to work. There we go. We're back into GhostBSD and it's newly updated. So now, we start to do the fun stuff. 
we need to start customising things for grandma. Now, every grandma is different. It's a stereotypical grandma, I suppose. Um, so we're going to have to perhaps uh, make things look nicer for her, install some games, some perhaps um, easy on the eye utilities and stuff like that. She said, I, I mean, I don't know. Your grandma might be into coding. Who knows? But uh, first we need to add grandma because uh, otherwise she's, she's going to wonder what's happening. We're going to call her Betty and we're going to call her Grandma Betty. Should we call Agnes? Should we call anything, really? I leave these a default. And we're going to add it to the wheel group, uh, the video, and the operator. Just so we can, you can you get things installed later on without having to log out and go into uh, your admin. So we can press uh, default on these. Now, empty password. Mm, you, I, this was a difficult one. I, I think uh, I think we should give her a password. I mean, you could use an empty one, I suppose. Um, but we're going to give her a password to use, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be Kitty. We'll, we'll use the word password Kitty. So once that's entered, we'll enter it again for verification. There we go. We don't want to lock out the account after creation. Nope. And yes and no. Then that's it. Grandma's account has been created. So we just uh, just close that and we'll just log out. We won't restart. We'll just log out and we'll log back into Grandma's. If I could find the... Uh, there we go. And log out. And yes, there you go. Right, so we can see the two accounts now. We've got Robo Nuggie and Grandma Betty. There it is, she's at the top. So, and it'll automatically uh, go on to Grandma Betty every time you boot in, so she won't have to select. So we just put in the password that we made, which was uh, Kitty. K I T T Y. There we go. Hopefully this logs in. Yeah, there we are. Right, and this second little bit now could be for Grandma. She could uh, customise it herself, or you could do it for her. It's sat in front of the computer uh, over her shoulder, or uh, just, you know, whatever. You could do it with her input, really. I think that might be the best thing. So we uh, will change... Um, did it do? Yeah, we'll install some software first. And what sort of things would Grandma want? Who knows? Best thing to ask her. She might say, ooh, I want some uh, knitting patterns or, um, I don't know, some puzzle games. But we're going to put in, we're going to change the background first to make things a bit more friendly for her. She might like this, of course. She might not. She might be a cat person. She may be a dog person or even someone who likes gerbils. But whatever it is, find a nice suitable desktop. And once that's done, we'll start installing some software. And obviously I've speeded this up, but she could be giving you input about what she wants. Various types of games. So we'll speed through all this because it does take a while. It might be time to go off and make a pot of tea for Grandma. Uh, give her some biscuits, sit her down. And uh, once she's finished uh, slurping and eating, uh, then maybe uh, things will be ready. So there we go. And you could disable the screensaver or point it to a uh, thing. Right, so I'm speeding through all this, but we're installing the games to see what they like, and we'll delete the ones that she doesn't like. And some of the some of the games are fine, some of them might be a bit complicated. I'm making terrible assumptions here that grandmas can't understand computers. I, uh, my grandma's no longer around, but my goodness me, I I do remember. I don't remember she was a she was a technical old bird. I can tell you that. Right, so there we go. And we'll just pretty things up a little bit. Rearrange the menus at the bottom. Uh, put some various uh, things. We're going to change the icon themes. And we're looking good so far. I think it's um, very similar to the Windows machines that she may have used previously. And we're going to customize Firefox. Yep. 
There we go. And we might actually go to a knitting uh, pattern and uh, put it as a bookmark at the top. You could put other bookmarks for other sites that she might want to visit. So that's set up for her. And the games seem to be working. Uh, anything else we need? Um, I suppose we could put a word processor or something like that so she could keep a diary. Uh, but one thing I think would be useful is if we had some kind of uh, accessibility tool. So we're going to use uh, KMag. So there, that's uh, magnifies portions of the screen. So if you've got dodgy eyesight, I'm not there, I'm not far off it myself. Um, you can zoom in to different parts of the desktop. So I know you could zoom in, uh, you could make it bigger on the Firefox itself, but I don't know. It's kind of like if there's other things she wants to read, like instructions or, or games, it, you can zoom into that using this, whereas you can't zoom in normally. And like I say, you could, uh, if you wanted to, Firefox to zoom in manually, but I think the KMag is a better tool. So, yeah, that's very good. I mean, this is just basically a rundown. It's kind of, you know, I, I'm making assumptions that all grandmas are nearsighted and uh, or short-sighted and likes kittens and easy games. But, you know, if your target, you know, if your target user is of that ilk, I think Ghost BST can be a fantastic uh, OS to use. You're not going to catch any viruses. It's super secure. It's probably more secure than Linux. I mean, as I, kind of like a good thing and a bad thing, this. As, I, as, as Linux increases in popularity, it's probably going to be targeted more by nefarious people who might have malicious software. So, you know, it's because you use FreeBSD or a FreeBSD-derived free OS, it's less likely to be targeted. So, but, you know, whatever. And also, I think the, the default security is slightly better. I'm probably going to get a little hate comments for that, but that's the, that's the way it is. And, of course, it's better than perhaps using Windows, which, uh, you know, she could click on something wrong and then that's it. So I think with, with GhostBSD set up like this, uh, simple tasks maybe, um, a folder for photos, uh, downloads that have been sort of like switched to downloading in a downloader folder on a desktop, so everything's there. If she wants to download any knitting patterns, etc., it can be there. Um, I've rearranged the menu at the bottom, so each individual icon represents a different, you know, like internet or drawing or photos or whatever it is and so everything is uh easily laid out i think and it, i mean she's not, not good I mean, it could well be that she wants to learn coding in which case then fine but as it is set up now it's something which uh, grandma could sit down in front of she wants to have a go of favorite uh, my young game there she goes so yeah like i said there may be an issue with wi-fi that's uh, free bsd foundation is is, is getting a large you know, cash injection really to uh, bring Wi-Fi up to spec for laptops etc but until that happens Wi-Fi can be spotty you can find dongles that work for a system that perhaps doesn't have reliable Wi-Fi but I personally if say for instance you know you setting it up for either a child or grandma or whatever it is I think having it set on one I have a desktop perhaps but having a laptop set up in one area with Wi-Fi connected, because he's not likely to move it up and down. Use Ethernet, and I think you can't you can't go wrong with that. It will work hundred percent. So yeah, it's just a quick guide. It's a little bit of fun, I suppose. Um, but just wanted to show you that it's not just Ubuntu or Linux Mint that can be as good as they are. They're not the only game in town. You know, with FreeBSD or a BSD, um, you can have the same thing. And GhostBSD. Is the best of all worlds. It's got an easy to use desktop with the reliability and security of FreeBSD. Personally, I can't see no downside. But anyway, let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If I'm completely wrong, tell me. If I'm right, tell me. If I'm crazy, tell me. If if uh, you've discussed it and you've had enough, tell me. Click the like button. Uh, if you like more than one video on this channel, please consider to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, then click the notification bell till it kind of like goes black or whatever it does so you don't miss out on any video releases. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.